Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. As a pastor, I had to consider the times in which we're living in. And so I went a different direction this week and I, I'm seeing that the things going on in our community right now and how difficult and challenging it has been. And so God led me in a different direction today. And um, I'm aware of a lot of trials and struggles as a pastor. So is our team. A lot of things come across, you know, our, our emails and phone calls and word of mouth as well. And I got to tell you, the, the morale in our healthcare system right now is at an all-time low. The morale in our schools is in an all-time low with teachers, students, parents, everyone. Everyone's just feeling it, right? I think we can all agree we're all feeling it. And the past couple of years has been very challenging. Um, I won't dismiss any pain from the beginning to now. It's all been challenging to get through. And last week I talked about the way forward is, uh, we, we talked about Joshua, the way forward is to hold on to his promises, to obey his word, and to be strong and courageous and to find our meeting place. And if we do that, we will be successful and have victory this year. But you know what else? The way forward is also the church you ready? Something really simple today. The church caring for one another. The church being sensitive to the times in which we're living in right now and sensitive enough to look around and go, how's my fellow brother or sister in Christ doing? How are we doing right now? And I got to tell you, as a pastor, um, we need your help. And this is, this is not a desperate plea. This is just us applying scripture to what we're going to hear today. But we as pastors, we have about eight on our, our church team here. We have over 2,000 people on our emailing list and attendance in this church if we were all to come. We cannot take care of that many people by ourselves. So I'm calling upon our church to work together to legitimately and carefully and wholeheartedly literally care for one another moving into this year. There's more than just what's going on with COVID. We're going to see things unravel um, mentally, emotionally, spiritually take place. It already has started, but a lot of things are going to begin to unravel um, on top of the physical sickness and loss and death. And so we as a church need to be ready. And just so you know, we've been praying for our healthcare workers so much all the past two years for our teachers, our, our parents, our students, and really all of us, just because we need lots of prayer right now. So let me give you our anchor foundation scripture today. It's Matthew 22, 36 through 37. There is a lot of scripture today. I wanted, to, wanted you to see the different ways that the church is called to do this together. And as Jody, or I'm sorry, as Dorothy uh, mentioned, this, uh, this Wednesday, Lord willing, nothing happens and we don't have to cancel anything, uh, we will be in here to discuss this topic biblically of what it means to be together to prepare ourselves to be ready even more when hopefully in praying, that the pandemic um, begins to die down again and we can get back to another way of life. Everything's changed though, hasn't it? The COVID pandemic has changed our normal, so I don't know what it's gonna look like when we get back, but we need to be ready because people are gonna need the hands and feet of Jesus Christ inside the church and outside the church. And here's our, here's our biblical foundation. And when I preach, I always like to have that. So you know this isn't just coming from a random idea. It's coming from the word of God. And it says this in Matthew 22, 36 to 37, Jesus was asked this question, teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? And Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. He's talking about your whole self, your whole body, inside and outside. This is the first and greatest commandment, and a second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. So love those around you as you would love yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Now there's a lot of scripture that I would love to dissect and teach you and a lot of deep things that I could get into today. But it's interesting that all of scripture hangs on these two commandments. This is critical to God. This is critical to Jesus. And he's talking to some Pharisees who had a zeal for God, but they struggled to have a zeal for their fellow man. 
They struggled to show love, the love of Christ to those around them. They loved themselves more than they loved others. And so Jesus confronts them many times in scripture with his love and his way of living and how to treat people. And so we're challenged that you can be zealous for God, but make sure your zealousness for God and your, and your passion for him to follow him and love him also means it pours into how we love each other, how we love each other. First John 4, 19 through 21 says this, we love each other because he loved us first. You know, I, I, I'll go into that scripture in a moment, but I tell my kids all the time <clears throat> these three things, to live by these three things and you will be successful in life. Love God, love others, obey the Bible. Love God, love others, obey the Bible. And I do break that up a little bit and I'll tell them, remember that when you love God and you obey his word, you'll properly and wholeheartedly love everyone else around you. Starting right here with your brother, your sister, right here with me and mom and dad, and, and then everyone else. If you love God and you follow his word, you'll be able to properly love every single person around you. And we can love because he first loved us. And it goes on to say this, if someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? Wow, that's a great question. And he has given us this command. Those who love God must also love their fellow believers. 1 John 3, 16 through 18. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Genuine love, therefore, is this. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Church, just so you know, love is a demonstration. It goes beyond the words, I love you, and it's lived out to those around us. John 13, 31 through 35, Jesus is with his disciples one last time having a serious moment. It would be the, the night he was betrayed and arrested. And he, he washes their feet and he's saying, do as I do. And then he reveals that Judas is going to betray him. And then he leaves them with this instruction. And I'm going to give you the last two verses, but let me read some context for you. John 13, 31, as soon as Judas left the room, Jesus said, the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory, and God will be glorified because of him. He's talking about himself, Jesus. And since God received glory because of the Son, he will give his own glory to the Son, and he will do so at once. Dear children, I will be with you only a little longer, and as I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me, but you can't come where I am going at the time. As, so now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So simple, isn't it? Love. Jesus is leaving his disciples. He could have said anything. He could have, broke, he could have pulled out, well, he didn't have commentaries back then. He could have pulled out giant books if he wanted. He could have pulled out all the knowledge he has of the most profound thing you should do for one another. And he says, as I'm gone, even though the Holy Spirit will come, he says that next, love. Easier said than done sometimes, isn't it? Love. The greatest ethic in the world is to love people the way Jesus loved us. And I clarify that specifically, the way Jesus loved not the way the world loves. And there are many ways that we can express love, but today I want to focus on the expression of simply caring for one another. Love in the body of Christ cares for those around you. Look around the room real quick. Look around to your left, to your right, if you can turn your neck enough without hurting yourself. Look behind you. Look in front of you. Without a doubt, I believe that you care for every single person in this room. I, I believe that, and I believe you care for people outside this community. 
Jesus challenges us, though, to show it. He challenges us to show the care. Last week, um, we prayed for my father-in-law. He had COVID, and uh, he was at the end of his COVID time and um, his quarantine, and he just wasn't right. He, he wasn't physically right. And uh, Saturday, I prayed for him, anointed him with oil, and his numbers increased, praise the Lord. But Sunday, I went, I went back to the house to help out, and I felt, felt God lead us to the house. And so I wanted to check on him. And after seeing him again, it just, he, just, it, he wasn't himself. And so I, I told my wife, I told um, his wife, Diane, I said, I really think he should go into the hospital. And the doctor we called, he also recommended it. And so we took him to the hospital. And after 29 excruciating hours waiting for a bed in the hospital, he finally got one. And that, that experience was very trying and very difficult. And the, all hospitals were like that. I called around to other hospitals to see if we could get him into a different place. And I'll be honest with you, one operator called, and I thought it sounded like a war zone in the background. You could just hear people yelling. You could hear you know, machines going off. She must have been in the ER answering the call. And one, one person I called, she just right away was strong with me, and I just asked her real quick, are you okay? And she's like, no, I'm just exhausted. So this is one operator, okay? That was the situation. And thankfully, praise the Lord, um, after a day of getting help with oxygen, and a couple shots here and there, uh, our father, my father-in-law's numbers got better and better. His vitals were good. His oxygen levels increased. And two days later, we brought him home. Praise the Lord. So he's home. He's doing well. So thank you for your prayers. Yeah. Now, as a pastor, I know how Calvary operates. I know what we do. But it was, it was powerful for, you know, for all of us as a family to firsthand feel your prayers to see people call and advocate for us and help us to, uh, to get him situated. And, and it was so amazing to have doctors and nurses here at the church that we could call upon. And so thank you so much. And to be honest with you, church, it just reminded me once again that we really do need each other right now. And it goes a long ways. It matters a lot. We were in tears for the way we were helped and those who were fighting for us. As a pastor, let me let, let me give you some thoughts to think about, and some of you have, have probably been through this, but um, there's a lot of situations that we could be here for people. Um, and just so you know, what we're dealing with in hospitals is not just COVID. We're talking about everyday life is still happening. Accidents are happening. People are getting hurt. People are getting different sicknesses, injuries, all those things. We're seeing it all. If you talk to nurses, they're seeing it all too. And so things are really hard there. But at the same time, people have gone through a lot in the past two years, loss of jobs, they're stressed out, they have anxiety and fears, um, people have lost loved ones, and that changes the, the d dynamic of their family and their household. And so things change, like who's going to pay the bills, who's going to take care of the trash and the, and the responsibilities and chores around the home when someone has passed away. And so what happens is we as a church, especially our care ministry, we step in and help out. But I got to tell you, there's so much going on that our care ministry needs help. And, it, and I realize that it's not a ministry that does this. It's the church body that does this. It shouldn't take a ministry to do this. We should be doing this naturally, right? And thank God for an amazing church that we care for people. But I, I think it, what our world's going through right now, I think it bodes and it, and it brings to the light that we need to bring this up again that we as the church are the hands and feet that care for one another, simply just care for one another. And so I just want to let you know that consider the fact that if someone does lose a loved one or if someone's sick or a whole family's sick, what will they do for food and groceries and such? What will they do about moving forward the next year, um, suffering and grieving, but also having to take care of all the responsibilities that loved one did? Well, we as a church step in and help them get through it. Simple as that. That's what we do. So together this year, moving forward, we need to love and care for one another. Now, I know we don't need biblical advice or biblical um, proof for this, but can I share with you different examples of what the church did in the early church to help each other? I have a lot. With the understanding of, of Romans 12, 4 through 5, check this out. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part 
has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. That's Romans 12, 4 through 5. We all belong to each other. Church, we're connected in Christ. He is the head. We are the body. So we have a mutual responsibility to care and love one another. And it's reciprocal. When someone is down, well, someone else steps in, right? And when that person's okay, they step in, and we just serve and give, receive and give, and that's how we care in the body of Christ. And what's cool is Jesus empowers you and enables you to do it because he's the head and the source of life, and so he gives you the energy and the ability and the giftings to do it. How about this? Galatians 6, 9 through 10. It will be on the screen for you. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. This is Paul talking to the church of Galatia. And this is a letter that they would read, and it would just be basic, simple advice. Let's not get tired of doing good, living a good life, but let's also not get tired of doing good for one another, especially those in the family of faith. Now, was Paul saying don't care for the community? Not at all. He was saying as you care for the community, make sure you take care of the church. As we care for others, we make sure we care within the church body. How about 1 Peter 4, 7 through 11? This is an interesting context. At this time, the church was being persecuted by Nero. Um, they lived with the belief and conviction that any time Jesus could come back. And this is what Peter tells the church how to live in the end. In the end all, of all things is near. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober mind of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides. So then all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. What do we see here? We see that Peter doesn't say build a bunker and wait for the end to come and hide. He doesn't say that. Gather all your weapons, get a year's worth of food and hide. He doesn't say that. No, and just so you know, Nero was the one who threw Christians into the stadium to be torn apart by lions. This is the context that Peter is talking to the church in. He, they, he taught a lot in 1 Peter how to suffer like Jesus suffered. And that we have to be willing to suffer to follow Jesus Christ. The end did not come yet, and it hasn't come yet for us. And this is how we should live. And what's crazy is, in the middle of all that, is prayer. Is being alert. It's not crazy. It's great. There's some other crazy things like hospitality. I think that's interesting. You know, meals and all those things. Make sure you do that. Like, okay. Because people have needs. People have needs when they're going through hard times. But he says, be alert and of sober mind. So in other words, keep your mind clear from all the craziness going on. And some even in commentaries believe even don't get drunk. So your mind can be clear to be praying for one another. Hey, tensions get high when things get hard. Love one another. Love covers over a multitude of offenses and sins. Things have gotten testy for the past two years, hasn't it? Guess what we should do? Bear with one another. Love each other. Be patient with each other. Be kind. 1 Corinthians 13. Follow the love scripture with each other. Offer hospitality. Open up your home. Give a meal. Take care of someone else's needs. Use whatever gift that God has given you. Why? Any talents, any gifts, spiritual gifts especially, but any talents, why? Because you, you are dispensing the grace of God to those around you. Some people are going to go, God, do you even exist in this time that I'm going through right now? And then you show up at the front door with a meal 
showing hospitality, and now you have made God visible. Praise the Lord. You get to be a channel of God's grace and love and touch in people's lives. It's amazing. Romans 12, 13, Paul even said it there, not just Peter. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. So I like to keep things ready in our home. I like to make sure we have a little extra money or extra food or the time to go do something for someone else. Always be ready to help those in need. What about when we're going through a hard time and some people need comforted? Well, guess what? The Bible talks about that too. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 says in verse 3 through 5, Praise be to the God, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. Now, the context of this is persecution and suffering for following Jesus. But it also says here that he's the God of all comfort. And so I believe we can apply this in all circumstances. Some of you have been through more. Some of you have been like a Job in your life. Some of you have gone through a lot. Well, guess what? God has not wasted that pain. God has not wasted that suffering. You are useful in the kingdom of God. You are a gift because what you've experienced from God in the church, you know how to show it to those around you. We need you. I haven't been through a lot of loss in my life. I don't know how to comfort like some other people do. And so we work together as the body of Christ. I do my part, you do your part, and now everyone is experiencing God's grace. That's what scripture teaches us to do. And, and some would even say, well, I'd rather, I'd rather not go through the pain so I don't have to have the gift of comfort. I hear you. I hear you. But you bring something, a balm from Gilead, so to say. You bring a healing ointment that no one else can bring. You have been through it so you can show sympathy and compassion and empathy that I cannot show or others cannot show. And some of you have the gift of mercy and, and compassion, and you're so gifted at being there and, and listening and helping people through. And so we need you in the time that we're living. And we've needed you for the past two years, don't get me wrong. We've needed all of this for the past two years, but things have still been bad. And so we must apply ourselves to this way of life as Christians. So what are some practical ways? Let's get, let's get really practical. Because look, the scripture does say this in, uh, in 1 Corinthians 12, 26. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it because we're the body. So when, when, our, when my fellow brother or sister is hurting, I hurt with them. That's what it says in Romans 12, 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. There's a time for joy and there's a time for sadness. There's a time for joy and a time for mourning. What does that say? It means that we're being sensitive to those around us. We're not tone deaf. It means we care. It means we're in touch with the love of Jesus Christ. And so we mourn with those who mourn. We had five funerals two weeks ago for different reasons. It wasn't all COVID. Five funerals. And it was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a tough week to keep getting emails of someone passing away. And that affected so many family members or outside of our church, but family members connected to our church and so we needed extra strength from God and we need the help. So here's some practical ways that we can show support and love, care, comfort. And number one is, you know, ready for this? It's, it's so simple. Just check in on someone. Making a phone call or a text or an email just to see how someone's doing, it means that you're thinking about that person. It means a lot. It means a lot to, to get a call or a text or, or an email to say, hey, I've been thinking about you. I've been praying for you. And when you do get to talk to them, can I, can I give you a recommendation and some encouragement to do something? Don't just say, I'm praying for you. I know sometimes we do that by accident and by habit. Take a moment to, to actually pray. 
Take a moment to hear, to let them hear your prayer for them. Let them hear your compassion. Let them hear your concern and your faith in God to help you help them get through it. Say a prayer while you're on the phone or when you're checking in, even if you have to text it because they're at work or something like that. I want to challenge you to call three to five people. Call three to five people this week and the weeks to come. And, and pray for people before you even do that because God will give you people to call and contact. So call, text, email, people you haven't seen in church, people you haven't seen in your group, people that live in your neighborhood or in your workplace. Just start calling and caring and see how they're doing. Secondly, we can start a prayer chain. Now we have one here. If you want to be a part of it, you can contact Pastor Cornelius here at our church. And, uh, but you can also start one with permission from the person that you've reached out to who needs help. And I'm sure some of you already know of people going through some sickness or illness right now, right? So when you call them or you check on them and you find out that they're in need, get permission and say, can I tell my friends to pray for you? And here's, here's the Holy Spirit gave me this earlier too, so I'm gonna say it again. Even ask people you don't even know where they stand with God to join you in prayer. Be a little evangelistic. Help them see what the church does in a time like we're living in right now. And ask them to join you in prayer. A prayer chain is this. You get like five to ten people to pray with you for this person, for this need. And then you tell that person, we got all these people praying for you. It's so comforting to know that. How about this? This still exists. Cards. Send cards of encouragement. Now, I know we can do that because I've seen all, you, see, you should see my mantle at home from all the Christmas cards. Well, my wife put them away, but you know. Anyone have their tree up still? Uh, we won't, okay, oh wow, this is actually quite a few. Not in my home, it comes down like pretty quick, you know, but it's all right. New season, new year, we get right into it. You know how to give out picture cards. We can give out cards to people in need around us. It's so amazing to get a handwritten card. I got this with my cousin Gary when he passed. The ministry here sent me a bunch of cards with scripture and encouraging words and prayers in it, and I really appreciate it. It was really cool. It was really cool to be on the receiving end and get that prayer and support. And, um, but we can do that. And one, one thing that happened recently is someone in our church was in the hospital, and uh, a group of people did a card shower and they all wrote cards and put it on the, and she had them put on the window mantle in the hospital room. And so not only was she blessed, but so were the nurses who saw a church love on her. So get some people together and do a card shower for someone in need who needs encouragement as well. If you need to know about some of the people we're helping, we have a care newsletter and you can do that and get signed up for it, um, subscribe to it by going to our website and clicking on bulletin, and you'll see the care ministry newsletter. Sign up for it, and you'll get different things going on in people's lives, like sickness, um, injuries, surgeries, loss of life and families. And so we send them cards, and we call them, and we pray for them. And so we would love for you to be part of that, part of that ministry with us if you need a little help of making some connections with people. Now, I will tell you this. When we were sick last year with COVID and it just wouldn't quit and day 10, we were still feeling miserable. It was awesome to get this next one. Deliver a warm meal. I love some food, but I love it even better when I don't have to cook it. Can I get an amen? So it's, it's just nice to not have to worry about what to get, what ingredients I need, Put it in the crock pot, ah, forget it, you know. I don't wanna do it, let's just order out. But you know what? We have a ministry called Take Them a Meal and everyone signs up and helps bring food to their homes, drops them off at the front door. And man, some of you guys know how to cook. And then if you don't know how to cook, what you do is you just call up Bob Evans. <laughs> you say, Bob, I need some food, okay? And you throw him a feast. I'm telling you, that means a lot to people. It was so cool for me to not have to worry about what we were gonna cook. My wife was down and out. I was the one cooking too. We had a new air fryer. I used it a couple of times. But man, when COVID got worse for me, I was like, I'm done cooking. I'm not cooking. So I really appreciate people who brought food to help us out. And uh, so delivery war meal, it means a lot to not have to worry about that. Here's a fifth thing. Again, consider 
COVID and what people want you to do and how close they want you to get, but help out around the house. We've had people go into the home um, because someone's in the hospital and they walk their dog for them. Like, how cool is that? Right, get, take their trash out, get the mail for them. Uh, we had one lady step in as the next of kin at the hospital to advocate for a woman because she didn't have anyone around for her to help her. That's, that's stepping up and just helping around the house. When we had snow, you shovel out people's snow, right? Going through a lot. Jumping people's cars. I know this is like, it should go without saying, right? But I'm just giving you ideas of what we're hearing people do here to give you ideas as well on how we can be sensitive to the needs to care for one another. There are things around the house though. This is particularly for people who have lost loved ones. I'm thinking of a sister right now. I talked to her on the phone last weekend. Her husband passed away and her faith is amazing. Her faith is amazing. She's praising the Lord that, um, that, that everything, the way, the way it went out, the way it went down and the way um, he went to be with God, um, she had such a peace about it because his faith in God. And so it's so hard as a pastor because we mourn, but we also celebrate the life. And, and to hear her strength and her faith, man, it inspired me. But I thought about her life and I was like, well, who's gonna do all the duties he used to do? And so what are we going to do as a church to help people in need like that? We step up and we, we're there for the long haul. That's what we can do to help out. So, and lastly, some people just need us to meet in person, if, if appropriate. Not just to help out around the house, but some of us just need encouragement. I was with someone this past weekend going through a lot in his life. And we had breakfast at Bob Evans, actually. <laughs> <clears throat> And man, I was comforted by that food. <laughs> but I was able to help him go through a difficult season in his life right now. It's not COVID, it's something else. And so we sat down and we, we prayed together. We fellowshiped. I gave him direction from the Lord and, and the word of God. And I was able to just encourage him. Church, it's going to take more than me or Pastor Cornelius or all the other team members to do that, we can do this together. We need to do this together. And, and here's why. This is the last, the takeaway for the day. We belong to the body of Christ spiritually, but we need to feel it physically. We belong. We have a theological, spiritual connection. There's no doubt that you and I are brothers and sisters in Christ, but we can say that, but we must experience it physically. And so we do it through a demonstration of our love and care for one another. The love of Christ compels us to demonstrate love and care for our spiritual family. Can I give you a few words of caution in closing? When you go to spend time with people or make phone calls or, or to help out during this time, um, and I'm praying that God will lead you today. Even as I've been preaching, I've been praying that God would um, lead you to someone to care for, to check in, and to be ready to serve and help. By the way, just so you know, I think God is so, he's so, he's brilliant, right? He's all knowing. But I think it's so important that we don't live for ourselves. We live for God and we live to serve others. And when we, we, we love God, right? And then God calls us to love people. And it's a deny of self, it's a denial of self. We're not, we're not serving ourselves. We're serving others. We're serving God. When we love other people, it's to love God too. It's a way to love God. And we can't live selfish lives in the Christian faith. It just doesn't allow you to. It doesn't want you to. Jesus doesn't want us to live selfless lives. And so this, this message is challenging because it's going to ask you to look outside of yourself and look around you and see how you can be there for a fellow believer and even someone who is not a believer in Christ. But here's some caution for you. Um, less is more when it comes to words. Your presence matters the most. I've made that mistake. I've talked too much. I've said something I shouldn't have said. And I was like, I'm a knucklehead. And thank God for the grace of people that, you know, they have grace for you, you know. But can I just encourage you and just as a, as a pastor and giving advice for this. And by the way, this message was to equip you, to equip us as a church, um, so we all do this together. 
And I'm, abl- I'm applying scripture, Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. God has given us pastors to equip the saints for the work of ministry. And so this is work too in the family of God. And so less is more with words. Your presence matters the most. To be a good listener, in other words. Um, don't make it about you or what you've been going through. Make sure it's all about them first. And then when it comes time to comfort them or if it helps with your experience, then share those things. But make it about them first. Uh, refrain from offering your, um, your opinion. And if, if you're not a doctor, refrain from offering your medical advice, especially right now with all that's going on. Leave it to the doctors to give that medical advice. Leave it to the experts on that or those that they have. Encourage them to go check with their doctor if needed. Um, I've been careful to be careful with that myself. Uh, be considerate and respectful to follow their desires for social distancing and masks. It's, it's better to ask than to assume what they want. And so just ask what they would prefer. This is how we care and put the interests of others before ourselves, as Philippians 2 verse 4 says. And lastly, do not prolong a phone call or go too lengthy. Know when to quit, <laughs> you know, know when to stop, and know when to just say, hey, I'm here for you if you need anything. Don't be afraid to reach out, and I'll, I'll check in with you this week. Just some wisdom and advice there on moving forward when you're caring for people, just to be careful not to be overwhelming um, or overbearing with them. Amen? Cool. Practical message, huh? But so important. So important to love one another in this way in our world we're living in right now. So let me stand together in prayer as we close. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and your direction on how to live in the body of Christ, how to be together in the time we're living in. And God, you have given us gifts and abilities and resources to love and serve one another. You've given us love to care and to be there for one another. God, lead us this week. And even those we just know already, may we be bold and courageous and brave to reach out and to care. Give us the words to say or the ability to listen. Lord, help us to comfort in the way we need to comfort. Help us to serve in the way we should serve. God, I pray most of all that you would be glorified. We don't do this for ourselves. We do it for you and for that person. It's not about us. So God, help us to show the love of Christ to those around us. God, we ask for your power to work in our hospitals, our healthcare workers, our schools, Lord, our first responders, our communities, our homes. God, the tension and the stress is so high and so heavy. And Lord, I pray you would break through, God, and may we, the church, be a shining light of hope and strength in the times that we're living in today. We thank you, God, that we live by your strength and your strength alone. But God, we also are grateful that we, the church, are stronger together. And God, we need each other. And your word says we shouldn't do life alone anyway. So God, help us to practice this important principle of caring and loving for one another, Lord. Give us the sensitivity to the needs around us. Make us aware. Give us discernment, Lord. And God, we thank you, Lord, for the offering we give as we leave or online. We thank you for the homes and those who are joining us online right now. Lord, we pray you bless them. Bless this offering, God. Continue to use it to make a difference in your kingdom here on earth. We give you all the glory and praise for this message and this day. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, church. Thanks for being here and online. Have a great Sunday.